What's going on everybody, this is James again, and today I'm going to be showing you how to mod the original Xbox, put Shenmue 2 on it, and make your own mods, or at least get started to. Um, this video is not going to be your typical step-by-step, -step, do this, then do that, and then do this kind of video. It's more of an overview of the process you would go through. Uh, this video is dedicated to Zeming, um, who was asking me some questions about... Um, you know, putting Shenmue 2 on a hard drive, modding it and whatnot. So this is just going to be a, uh, you know, pretty decent video. Probably not too quick, might run a little while, uh, just because there's a lot to talk about. And uh, yeah, so um, let's get started, shall we? So to be able to understand what we're doing to the Xbox, uh, I'm going to show you first the components inside of the Xbox so that you have a general idea of what's going on. Now, this console, for its time is very heavily based on the computer arch architecture. Um, that, that's a little little bit of a, a white lie. It, it, it's not exactly the same as a computer, but the way the components are set up, it's pretty similar. So let me show you. Um, so this is my original Xbox. Uh, I got this Xbox back in 2005. Uh, this is not a launch day Xbox, this was actually a replacement of my launch day Xbox that eventually overheated and died. Uh, I had a bad unit, got it for Christmas, uh, the year came out, lost that unit, got a replacement, lost that unit, then eventually got this guy and had it since. Uh, I usually, you know, take it apart and clean it out every now and then. So I'm going to take this off um, and I'll show you what's inside. So pretty much the way it's set up is... Um, we're going to be doing a soft mod, which means there's no hardware modification. It's merely just the software in the Xbox. Um, so I'll just give you a quick view of the components here. So we have the DVD drive right here. Uh, this cable right here is the ribbon cable, which connects both of the DVD drive, the hard drive, into the motherboard underneath. Uh, this right here is a hard drive. Um, this Xbox is hard modded in a sense where I upgraded the hard drive. Um, there is no mod chip, it is all um, software based, however the hard drive is upgraded from the, I believe it's an 8 gigabyte standard hard drive and uh, I put 120 gig in here. I'm eventually going to throw in a terabyte, uh, I just never really had the time to, uh, to do that. Uh, this video is not going to be focusing on upgrading the hard drive because that is, if you don't have a mod chip on your Xbox, that is a bit of a process. Um, and if you're not familiar with how to use uh, Linux, um, burning live CDs, booting your computer off of them, you might have a hard time because the software you need to use is Xbox Hard Drive Manager. And, um, you know, it's a little, little involved. Uh, however, this one is upgraded. Um, so, yeah, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you uh, what you have to do. So, let me go ahead and, uh, so, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, so uh, we have the Xbox set up to the TV up here, right there. And uh, we have my Xbox connected uh, via Ethernet cable that you'll see here into my laptop. Um, and I'll get to why it has to be that way um, in a minute. Uh, so some things you're going to need. Uh, obviously, you're going to need an Xbox. You're going to need a laptop or a computer running either Mac, Windows, Linux, BSD, Solaris. It doesn't matter what operating system it is. Uh, we're performing a very simple process. Um, however, I'm using Windows uh, 7 because Windows 8 it sucks. Um, and uh, the tools that you, know, you need to use if you're going to be modding your Xbox run better on Windows 7 in my opinion. Um, XP is optimal, but um, I'm not running XP anymore. Although I really wish I was. Anyway, uh, you're going to need that. You are going to need a memory card. Let me just uh, fix the thing here. So you're going to need an original Xbox memory card. And we have a Duke controller because the Duke is awesome. Don't care what you think. So pretty much like what we have to do is uh, we have to get a set of special save files called uh, soft mod installer deluxe and uh, that's going to allow us to perform a buffer underflow exploit which is a little technical 
So pretty much it's going to let us fool the Xbox and allow us to install some hacked software. Uh, if, you, if you didn't notice, to see that my LED indicator is blinking, uh, that's just a mod that I did. Or not really that I did, it's just a setting that I set because I think it's cool. Um, so yeah. Um, other than that, you're going to need one of the three following games. You're going to need uh, Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell, Mech Assault, uh, 007 Agent Under Fire. One of those three games will allow you to perform this exploit. They have to be the original copies, not any type of special hits or anything along those lines. Um, for this demonstration, I'm going to be using Splinter Cell. Now, for those of you who uh, may run into this, some Xboxes, for some reason, don't work with one of those three games. Like, for instance, my Xbox only worked with Mecha Soul and Splinter Cell. Uh, it did not work with 007. I don't know if that's just because of user error on my side, like I forgot to put something somewhere, or, um, you know, something else got messed up. Alright, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you uh, how to boot the game and load the modded save files. Now, I can't stress this highly enough, to actually get the save files onto the memory card, uh, it's there's a couple of different ways to do it. Uh, I'm not going to be showing in this video how to actually get the save files on the memory card because in all honesty, it's kind of a pain. Um, the easiest way is to go out and buy an action replay for the Xbox, which comes with a USB adapter. Uh, I have one, I just don't know where it is because I just moved into my apartment not too long ago, so everything is just kind of still in boxes until I get some more shelving. Um, maybe eventually I'll do a video on that, but honestly, it's just like a process, like just get it on your memory card. You can either use a ready, a modded Xbox by using FTP to FTP the files onto the memory card which gets mounted when you plug it in with an Xbox with a hacked dashboard. Uh, you can use Action Replay to, um, you know, transfer the saves from your PC to your, uh, to your memory card. Or if you know somebody like myself who has a memory card with the save files already on it, they can just, um, you know, use a normal Xbox and copy the save files over. There's no problem with that. So, uh, alright, so I'm going to show you uh, what the Xbox does when you boot the save files. Alright guys, uh, so I have what I need. So we have Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell for the Xbox. This is the NTSC uh, region version, so the one you'll find in North America and Canada. Um, and as you can see, the disc is not greatest hits. This is the actual retail original release. This is what you will need. This guy right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pop this into the Xbox. My drive's a little stuck so i got to smack it to open it. Pop that back in. Oh, actually, no, don't do that. Hold on one second. So <laughs> I actually just skipped a vital, uh, a vital part of doing this. So. We grab the memory card here. So what you want to do is, you want to take your controller, put the memory card in slot one or slot two, doesn't matter. And then, now, let me go up to the TV here. All right, so that's okay. So you go to memory, on this memory card, we'll have the soft one installer, which is uh, it's a Linux booter. Uh, I have SID for Splinter Cell, and just a save file for American Wasteland. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to copy this to your hard drive, and you want to copy this to your hard drive. Now, I didn't put the other games on here because they didn't work for me. Um, eventually, I will just so I have a repository of these save files. And then you want to verify on your original Xbox that they actually did copy and that they're not like, you know, um, corrupted. So we have the installer and we have the Splinter Cell Linux profile save file. Uh, I'm not going to copy these over in front of you because mine are already copied on here and I don't want to overwrite them. So once you have your save files in place, what you want to do now is you want to put the disk in the Xbox. Close it, 
and then have it boot. So the Xbox is now going to boot Splinter Cell, and I'll show you what happens. Uh, one thing I cannot highly stress enough, if you're going to go and mod your Xbox, and uh, I didn't put this in the video only because it gets a little technical, uh, you need to make sure you're on the latest dashboard update. To do that, the easiest method is uh, grab a copy of Halo 2 and launch the Xbox Live menu inside of it. It'll install the Xbox Live update, which will bring you to the dashboard version that you need to be on. I cannot highly stress enough, if you do not do that, you will break your Xbox doing this. Uh, always, always, always update to that dashboard version. Uh, I've broken three Xboxes that way. Um, not anybody else's, but just test units I had, just to see what would happen, because they were on their way out anyway, because they were dying. So, yeah. Alright, so from here, you want to go to Start Game, and what we're going to do is, we're going to go to Linux... And that's now going to exploit once we hit checkpoints. Uh, it's going to exploit, which is a buffer underflow exploit, and it's going to boot the Linux installer. So, bam. <laughs> Alright, so uh, I guess not. <laughs> uh, that's funny. So, yeah, you'll run into problems like this where it just freezes. Uh, it's probably because this save file has already been used. Uh, or something like that, something got overwritten or copied. Uh, so, let me go ahead and just boot my Xbox the normal way, and I'll show you what that menu looks like. So, you're going to see a different menu, only because my Xbox is already modded. This is my own custom Unleash X menu. Uh, so when you actually do the, uh, the mod, it's going to bring you to the soft mod installer deluxe installer menu, which looks a little bit like this. So you see where it says backup and restore, uh, you're going to want to create all these backups. I already made them, so I'm not going to do them again. Uh, and then you're going to install single boot soft mod. Dual boot soft mod was only there when Xbox Live was available, so if you were to hit like the power button, it would boot in normal mode. If you were to power on the Xbox with the open disc tray button, it would boot into hacked mode. Um, so, yeah. You would just do that. It takes about five minutes, and it's all pretty much automatic. So let me go ahead and restart my Xbox. All right. So, let me change the theme so that you're looking at the theme you normally have. Oh, actually, that's not it. I actually like the way that looks. Default. So, this is what it looks like when you first mod it. Um, except the menu names are going to be a little different. I was just like, whatever, so I called it Hacked by James. Alright, so, once you get it to this point, you can then copy Shenmue 2 to the hard drive. Um, you can either use the Shenmue 2 disc, put it into the Xbox drive, and then you can use these menus to actually copy it to the hard drive, so that it just shows up in your game menu, so... Here, I have Shenmue 2 and Shenmue 2 Undub. Uh, this Shenmue 2 is actually the special 4 gigabyte ISO that you can find online. Um, for modding purposes, it's always best to use the actual retail disc. However, if you don't upgrade the hard drive, uh, you can go to DC ISO Zone or uh, 
a torrent site and download the 4 gig ISO version of Shenmue 2, which is a special version of Shenmue 2 truncated so that it fits on a single layer DVD. You can copy that or you can actually modify the ISO uh, at your computer and copy it over to the Xbox. Um, so it's actually copied from the disk to the hard drive. You can just go to, uh, I believe it's system, miscellaneous, copy game disk. That'll copy the game disk from the CD into the relative directory on the hard drive so that you can actually use it. Uh, I prefer using this program, DVD to Xbox, only because it makes it a little easier and there's a built-in file manager. So, yeah, that, that's, a, that's about it. So now, if you have your Xbox modded, um, if you got it to this point, um, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you quickly how to FTP files to and from the original Xbox. Um, as you can see, I have a static IP set on the Xbox itself. Um, if you don't understand what IP is, I highly suggest you Google it. Um, knowing basic networking is vital if you're going to be modding Shenmue 2 because you're going to want to utilize FTP to copy files to and from the hard drive. So let me go ahead and show you on my Windows laptop what I am talking about. So I'm just going to zoom in. It's a little, little bit of a ghetto setup, but you know what? It works. All right. So, I have my laptop set up here. And uh, as you can notice, the background is Shenmue related. Props to Ricardo Valverde for making that. So, what we want to do is, I already set the static IP to the Xbox itself. Um, and that's connected to my laptop via the Ethernet cable right here. So that's in the back of the Xbox and the other side is plugged into the Ethernet port on my laptop. Uh, I am doing that to bypass the router so that we get the fastest connection between my laptop and the Xbox because we're going to be copying like a 4 gigabyte, you know, 4 gigabyte to 8 gigabytes worth of files. Um, what kind of a cable you need uh, is called a crossover cable, which Pretty much you can find anywhere. Uh, this one specifically is Cat5e crossover, so we get a nice decent speed. Um, the bottleneck is on my laptop purely, and the Xbox purely is not the cable, unfortunately. Uh, it is the network adapter, so you get the fastest speed possible. All right, so now that we have the static IP set up on here, we're gonna have to make a static IP on the laptop so that the two devices can talk to each other without a smart switch or a router in between them. So to do that, let's go to Network and Sharing Center from your control panel, change adapter settings, local area connection. Uh, I believe this is actually already set up, but we go to Properties. Since we're using TCP IP version 4, we're going to modify version 4. And I have my alternate configuration set up already. So that should work, so let's check. So the program I'm using is an FTP program called FileZilla. Um, it works very well. Qt FTP is another good one. So we're just gonna wait for that to load. All right, so what we have here is the program running on my laptop. It's a little hard to see. So the host is going to be the static IP of the Xbox, which we can see from the menu is 192.168.1.8. Username at default is going to be Xbox. Password at default is going to be Xbox. And you don't need to put anything in for ports. We're using a default port. So a quick, quick connect. And hopefully we actually get somewhere. And it looks like we are... Not. Okay. Oh, actually, I was wrong. Yes, we are. Okay, so these drives right here are the mounted drives on the Xbox. Uh, C drive is usually where the operating system is. E drive and F drive are my other partitions that I keep my applications and games and emulators. Shenmue 2 is specifically on the F drive under games. All right, so we have Shenmue 2 and Shenmue 2 Undub. Once you have your Xbox set up to this part, you can then move 
files back and forth. So, so for instance, if you want to mess with the actual executable for Shenmue 2, the default.xpe, uh, you just drag and drop it. And now it's on your computer to modify. Very, very simple networking, very simple stuff. So you can pull back and forth, um, you know, to the Xbox, push and pull files to your will. And uh, yeah, so that, that's really about it. Um, it's really simple. Uh, if you go to the website Xbox Scene, they have tutorials with the specific how-to directions on how to do all this. Um, so yeah, I hope this video was a little bit of a, uh, you know, a little bit of a uh, small guide so you can get general understanding of what's going on and how I make some of the mods that I do. Um, not the specific modding procedures, but, you know, just like how to get your Xbox to the point where you can push and pull files. So, yeah, that, that's really about it. So I'm just going to end this here, and uh, as always, have a nice day.